This is Herb. Herb likes to go fast, so he bought one of these. He needed to learn to drive fast, so he called the guys at NASA about attending HPDE. Herb knew driving instruction would help, but he also knew that having data would make him way faster. So he turned to us. Herb added a CD5 logging dash and a plug-and-play OBD2 adapter cable to get data from the stock ECU. He powered it with a 12-volt adapter cable and mounted it using the RAM mount's arm and a RAM mount's adapter bracket so he can take it out of the car when he isn't on the track. Herb was pretty happy, so he went to the track. But when he got back, he wasn't sure what to do with all the useful data he collected. So he called Brett, and Brett called us. And we showed him how easy it was once he got the basics down so he could teach Herb. Follow along and we'll show you how easy it is too. So just going into this, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project. Um, afterwards we'll save the project so you don't have to build everything, but this is how we'll start off. After opening the new project, the data log will open with the Project Explorer on the left hand side. Uh, now the first thing we'll do is we'll highlight and double click the fastest lap, which AEM data already does for you immediately, so it mm -hmm. identifies lap 7 as the 202 lap. And then find a, find a lap by our slow driver, so lap 9 would be the lap from our slow driver, and we'll just simply right click that and set it as the layer 2. And then from there what we'll do is we'll start um, adding the information to the trace that you know, we want to compare. So what, what items are you looking to compare when doing driver development coaching? The two that I find most valuable are speed, and most importantly the difference between the minimum speeds and then throttle position, which is where he picks up the gas again. So we'll add by, uh, we can add those items into the trace by dragging them from the channel list to the trace. You can find vehicle speed next. I'll grab the throttle position. So since we have a third field here, what do you, what do you suggest we put in there? So what I would you like? probably, I would probably enter engine speed in RPM so you can see, um, how the drivers were um, shifting, you know, if they were you know, getting the most out of the car, mm -hmm. staying in the power band, um, so that'd be a good one to focus on. So we can make a track map by right-clicking in open space, going to add view, selecting track, then we can select setup track, we'll name it by pressing segments and then clicking calculate. So this calculates um, all the turns on the track, left and right, mm -hmm. so we can see uh, section by section where the speed was made. Yeah. I wouldn't change a thing about that. That looks right. Perfect. Yeah. Um, one thing that you can note here, too, is uh, looking and scrolling through the log, you'll see two icons on the track. One will be an orange one, and one will be a white one. Mm -hmm. The orange representing the slower driver, and then the white representing the faster driver. And you can scroll through the trace and see how the, uh, the two cars you know, are doing on track versus one another. <laughs> Significant. <laughs> yeah, the differ difference is clear immediately. So right now we're looking at a time-based setup. Mm -hmm. We can press F9 on the keyboard, I'll do that now, and it'll toggle it to a distance based. So now we'll see, you know, side by side at a given point on track, what each car is doing, um, or the speed that it was at, the throttle that the driver was at, um, as well as the RPM that was held. So what are what are some things you see when doing that? The all right. So let's look at the fastest turn on the track, which is Riverside. Well. Obviously, first off, you see the differential in speed. You can see uh, the trace below, throttle position, mm -hmm. uh, where the slower driver is definitely a lot more tentative about going back to full throttle. What does the data tell us about the difference? Like, how, how much is that in terms of time? Because we're obviously so, trying to find 
time on the track here. Yeah, so, so by highlighting the section right there, I can see down below, that was 3.89 seconds where the slow driver was modulating the throttle, where there's the fast driver was flat out the entire time. Mm -hmm. So just about, we'll say four seconds of time not accelerating, which actually equaled about a distance in mile an hour of about 15, where the fast driver is now going 15 miles an hour faster than the slow driver. Um, so next thing that we can take a look at too is we can, we can dive in a little bit deeper and see how AEM data can show us some information automatically. So right here, I'll right click at the top and add a new tab and then I'll name that tab reports. We're gonna start making a channel report. We're going to, in the bottom, in the list right here down at channels, with the green icon, mm -hmm. we can uh, select the channels that we're looking at. We'll do vehicle speed, throttle position, do engine speed, as well as coolant temp. So the same as the channels that we picked on the previous screen. Exactly. We'll also go ahead and select the layers checkbox at the top. Oh, and then yeah. you can press OK. We'll extend that screen out. So here's a quick uh, at a glance overview that you can see of you know, which lap had the faster vehicle speed, mm -hmm. had the fastest average vehicle speed overall, um, as well as uh, engine speed. And even the coolant temp, you can see that the faster lap resulted in a higher average coolant temp and a higher max coolant temp. Um, and then uh, another easy channel report we can make is uh, based on segment times. So if we go to add view and then time, so right here it'll be the report times, it'll show the segment times, and then we'll just click for uh, showing the rolling fastest lap. Press OK. That right there will generate um, all of the segment times from each place on track. With that, we can see you know, where the time can be made up. And then we can also use this to show the faster driver down at the end that potentially with his subsequent lap, he had a faster first half of the track. So we can help the faster guy get faster. Exactly. Which, well, I didn't set out to do, but I'm sure everybody always wants to go faster. Exactly. <laughs> so, and this is all done automatically. Correct. The this way it's is highlighted. All generated automatically by the software. What I would probably do next with this data set right here, once we have everything kind of set up, is mm -hmm. you'll want to go up to the top to file, save the project, um, so that when you have logs in the future, you can import the logs, open up this project, and everything will be set out just as you have it. Okay. So we'll go in there, we'll name the project uh, button willow underscore NASA, and we'll save it. Now, Brett, what what are you gonna do with you know this newfound data? Well, I'm gonna sit down with Herb and show him how he can get a little bit faster. You don't remember what your right foot's doing when you're on the track, but when you can see what it's doing, and then the next time you go out, you actually, you recall the data trace within the back of your mind as you're on the track, and you can correct your mistakes. Yep. It's just an interesting way to trigger uh, different behavior on track. Yep. I, think, I think the visual aspect of it is pretty cool. And something that you can do here too, because see you have a, a really big data set here from it looks like an entire race weekend um, you can simply go to file at the top and then trim the log file and maybe select one or two laps that you want to kind of take out of there and we'll select lap nine so we can export just that lap we'll save it as button willow zl1 lap nine save that and that way when you know, you're going back and looking at historical data instead of opening up the giant log you can focus and just look at that single log what do you think about all this 
Well, there's a lot to take in, but if he wants, if he expects to get faster, this is where he has to go. I mean, because you can only learn so much from being self-taught. Exactly. Like, that's the way to learn the least and to make the most mistakes. Uh, and video. And then the next step is to getting data, where you can actually see what you're doing on track and where you're doing it on track. Because as you know, we both know, think you remember exactly what you were doing exactly. at that, <laughs> at that yeah. part of the track, but you don't because for some reason the human brain just isn't isn't accurate when all the adrenaline's flowing. Uh, but this actually, you know, visually slows the car down for you and tells you where you can make the improvements. In many cases, it actually shows how. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks for having me down. Yeah. I appreciate it. Brett, thank you for coming down. Hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully you guys learned as well. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see so we can plan for the next video and get you guys the content we need so that you guys can go faster as well. And don't forget to like our Facegram and Instagram. Facegram and Instagram pages. <laughs> our Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, we've obviously got a big tack in the middle there and we've got some uh, important data points around it including water temp, oil temp, and you can configure this screen however you want. So this is a very customizable display using AEM's free Dash Design software. So we've downloaded that software off of AEM's website.